To say not against the Holy Ghost is the fear of the Holy Ghost, who is the Lord. What's the fear of the Lord? That Holy Ghost your God. The Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrad I thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe if this is not your first time here and you've been blessed by these messages then consider becoming a partner with us Acts chapter 9 verse 31 then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied it's not even added it means it was multiplied things were multiplied say things, things. were multiplied. multiplied but things are mul listen things are multiplied when you do the first part of this verse walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost the fear of the Lord is a thing it's something they did mm -hmm. they walked in the fear of the Lord say they. they they walked in it that meaning they were the ones doing it right and the comfort of the Holy Ghost that's what he did mm -hmm. the word comfort there is paraclete it's the same thing that when Jesus said I'll send another comforter I'll send it's just another one of his names it's what he does they walked in the fear of the Lord that's what they did and he did what he does yes. and when they did that what happened they were multiplied so the fear of the Lord is a thing walking in it that's a thing and the comfort which is what he does or the paraclete is not a thing the Holy Ghost is not a thing mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost is not a thing he's God he's a person and he's in the earth so there is a multiplication that takes place when you begin walking in the fear of the Lord and in knowing the Holy Ghost so I'm gonna talk about this what it is the fear of the Lord what it is and how you do it how you get into it would it be good for your life to be multiplied yes. Yes. right this is where we need to go fear of the Lord the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. and in the things that he does mm -hmm multiplied many people all over the world all over the earth are using the words I worship you Holy Ghost that weren't using them before and if you're one of them you if you're one of them this is not insignificant you've come a long way from probably where you were before you've been introduced to someone not just an anointing you've been introduced to someone who does things say someone, someone. who does things Justice. who's this someone holy the holy ghost when you begin worshiping him i worship you holy ghost using those words you start to know him as god he starts to reveal himself as god to you if you don't worship him and you stand outside and look in but it's a big deal you've come a long way say I've come a long way. come a long way I preach on this all the time these were words specific words say specific words specific words, specific words that I was given he said use these words I worship you Holy Ghost well that's why I preach on it so much he told me to use those words so I'm telling you to use those words now when you use those words something begins to happen I hope you can hear this I'm speaking from a place this evening when you use those words something begins to happen something begins to happen in you and to you I tell you to sit there and, and say I worship you Holy Ghost 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 you know and then that you're tempted to think shouldn't I be doing something else shouldn't I you know shouldn't I be saying something else first Corinthians 12 6 says there's a diversity of operations 
diversity means different it's a different operation it's a new operation say a new operation, new operation. it's happening to you it's something new that happens to you say it's something new, it's something new. That, happens that happens to me, to me. now I'm gonna try to help you out this evening okay from somebody who worships the Holy Ghost a lot something happens to you mm -hmm. say something happens to me happens right to me. so I'm not just saying oh you gotta just repeat these words for no reason and for no purpose something happens to you that, that's what this message is about mm -hmm. are you here revelations chapter 4 verse 8 and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night say day and night, day and night. they rest not day and night saying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty which was and is and is to come wouldn't they get tired of that they say it day and night day and night they don't even go to sleep they just say it over and over again right they're worshiping God you understand this this is what the words they were given say words they were given to worship God now they don't get tired of it because something is happening to them I'm telling you please hear this every time they say it something happens to them they're quickened by God's glory not his anointing I'll talk about that in a second but they're quickened by God's glory his glory is part of himself what's it make him want to say it again and until you've done listen until you've done this where you've said I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost and you've done it enough to where his glory say his glory, his glory. starts to bump into you not his anointing his glory starts to bump into you then you know something's happening we're changed from glory to glory using the words I worship you Holy Ghost causes you to enter in to some of that glory so the angels are saying holy holy well you might think that they got tired of this but something more is going on to them say to them. to them otherwise they would get tired of it they go ah holy and leave but they don't they're being changed they're being blessed when they're blessed their things are multiplied to them are you here I'm gonna end up connecting all of this as we go on I hope you're excited about it we go from glory to glory say we go from glory to glory did it say we go from anointing to anointing no. no so there's only so far you can go listen there's only so far you can go with the anointing at some point you've got to have glory that changes you to another glory we're talking about the Holy Ghost his glory his glory is not an anointing does he have anointings yes does he give people anointings but that anointing is not his glory his glory emanates from himself say himself, himself. personally so you got to know him personally and have personal fellowship with him the comfort of him the Holy Ghost the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost multiplied you want to be truly multiplied you're going to need to have him personally rubbing off on you with his glory are you here yes. all right most know an anointing and think that's him you can get mad at me if you want I'm telling you I've been around enough to know most know an anointing and there are anointings most know an anointing and they think that anointing is him he is not an anointing he is the living God the Holy Ghost and when you get to know him as God you get to know his glory but you won't get to know him as God till you start worshiping him if you knew him as God you would worship him are you here yes. he is not an anointing 
and I'm introducing him the Holy Ghost to you and it sounds different it's why the words I say sound different than other anointings because I speak from a different place and it sounds different a lot of people don't know what to do with it They're like ah but those who know know I speak from the glory I hope you can hear this I'm speaking from the glory sounds different it feels different say it feels different. it feels different does it feel different does the glory feel different mm -hmm. does the glory sound different it does most are used to the anointing we all have seen the anointing we all understand it right and they think that's the Holy Ghost in fact they all say that that's the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. no that's the anointing of the Holy Ghost it's not the Holy Ghost if it was the Holy Ghost you would worship him and worship takes you into the glory into knowing him as God is this making sense it's why the things I say sound so much different than everybody else you still here yes. how many other people that you know I'm not you know just trying to pat myself on the back but sometimes you got to say some things how many people do you know that sit home and worship the Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost Holy Ghost I worship you you are God in the earth today and get messages and then go and preach on them talking about the difference and that, you know I kind of have to say these things that the anointing is not the glory and the glory is not the anointing most of us here in this room understand it you understand but a lot of people out there let me ask you a question was Moses anointed was Moses anointed absolutely right he was anointed in fact Deuteronomy 34 9 says he laid his hands on Joshua and the same anointing that was on Moses went on Joshua and the people followed Joshua because he was anointed so Moses was anointed to do what he did and then Joshua took that same anointing and went and did what he did yet Moses pleaded with God and said show me your glory Moses operated in all kinds of anointing but he still said show me your glory why your glory because it was God's personal glory the anointing and the glory are not the same and then God said I'm gonna let all my goodness when talking about the glory he said I'm gonna let all my say my my goodness passed before you right and Moses had to hide in a rock because he couldn't take it it was too good did God show him his anointing no Moses already had an anointing he showed him his glory and then he came down from the mountain what did he do when he came down from the mountain he had to put a veil over his face because he was shining with the glory of God that rubbed off on him glory is not an anointing he came down the mountain he put a veil on his face because the people couldn't take it a lot of people can't take it they hear the things I'm saying and they're like nah, I hate this guy because I'm not speaking from the same place that other people speak from but then 2nd Corinthians 3 16 says we with unveiled face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord we don't have the veil on our face anymore which means we're supposed to see and partake of the glory of the Lord who's the Lord now the Lord is that spirit so worship takes you somewhere never tire of it if you're tired of it you're not doing it right just keep going Luke chapter 4 verse 8 thou shalt worship say worship. worship worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve now if you're not doing the first part of that the and him only shalt thou serve is going to be lacking you're not gonna see how to serve him thou shalt worship the Lord thy God now many times worship is translated fear and many times fear is translated worship 
so thou shalt worship or fear the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve him only say him only why would that be who's the only God you're gonna serve in the earth today there's only one God in the earth today he's the Holy Ghost him only well if you're not worshiping him you can't him only serve him mm -hmm. but if you worship him as God you will know him as God and once you do know him as God you'll begin to understand how to serve him you'll begin to understand that he is a God that uses words say he's a God, he's a God. that uses, he uses words, words what do we say here all the time the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words no well, I don't think it's that important well then you're not gonna get very far but I'm not talking to people who don't want to get very far I'm talking to people who want to go on with God into all that he has for them if you know him as God you want to walk with him as God you're gonna to need to walk with him with your words let's look at uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 3 for they being ignorant of God's righteousness say God's righteousness, God's righteousness. so that'd be the Holy Ghost's righteousness or the way the Holy Ghost wants you to be right with him God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God or the way God wants to do it see now if you submit yourself to the way God wants to do it then you'll have more success and you'll be multiplied mm -hmm. verse 6 but the righteousness which is of faith speaks faith speaks, faith speaks. you're gonna walk with God you're gonna be saying some things verse 6 again but the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise what are the next two words say not the first thing he addresses is to say not then you go down to verse 8 but what saith it the word the righteousness which is of faith being right with God the Holy Ghost is you stop saying some things and you start saying some other things now I've been around a while and I hear people even word of faith people that you know should know better and they'll say things oh I'm coming down with the flu all oh, things the economy is so bad I'm only saying this because I'm trying to make a point here you understand I never say these things I refuse to say anything like it I don't care if I'm feeling bad I'm never gonna say I'm feeling bad say not the first part of the righteousness of faith is to say not something I don't know how I'm gonna make it I don't know where the money is gonna come from say not I would never listen this is so very important I would never say that because I fear the Lord I never say it because I fear the Lord who's the Lord the Holy Ghost he's in the earth he's in me I'm never gonna say and speak contrary to what I know his word already already says I say not that what saith it the word it's okay to say that mm -hmm. my God supplies I don't know where it comes from my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus talking about the fear of the Lord I hope that I'm framing it up enough the fear of the Lord has to be something to do with what you say not and say that's the right righteousness of God if they're walking in the fear of the Lord they're gonna have to be they're gonna be in supreme reverence to the fact that I am NOT gonna say something against the Living God who lives in me he's supplying all my needs I'm never going to say my needs are not met or supplied for because I fear the Lord are you getting this the end result is I will be multiplied Isaiah chapter 6 let's read verse 1 and in the year that King Uzziah died I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple verse 2 above it stood 
the seraphims each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the Lord of hosts literally the Lord of spirits the whole earth is full of his glory and the post of the door moved and the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke are you here didn't we just read something like that in revelations mm -hmm. well this was in I want to say the 8th century BC when Isaiah wrote this that's 700 years past when John saw it those angels had been saying this for 700 years you think they got tired of it you'd think they would after 700 years but they don't Amen. because it does something to them are you getting this yes. then said I so he's Isaiah saw this then said I woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of what unclean lips why 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 him in this situation does he automatically go wait a minute my words are not right my words are not righteous are you getting this and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips they're saying things opposite for mine eyes have seen the king and the lord of hosts verse 6 then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the thongs from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this hath touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sins purged my point here is to say not say say not, say not. is the fear of the Lord mm -hmm. learning how to say not against the Holy Ghost is the fear of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. to say not against the Holy Ghost is the fear of the Holy Ghost who is the Lord mm -hmm. are you getting this what's the fear of the Lord that I would rather I know this sounds extreme I would rather eat live coals than say something against the Holy Ghost say not but the righteousness of faith speaks the word so the fear of the Lord and the worship of the Holy Ghost I hope you're getting this I believe people are well you got to know who he is first right you got to know that he is God in the earth today he's the Holy Ghost right and if you're gonna worship him I worship you Holy Ghost and you're looking for more things to say I worship you Holy Ghost your words that you say not and your words that you say that are in alignment with him become worship Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6 is not this the fast that I have chosen so God chose this kind of fast right and then he goes on to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free that they break every yoke right yeah. so he chose a specific type of fast and then you go down to verse 13 and look at the end of verse 13 and it says nor finding thine own pleasure doing thine own ways nor speaking thy own words this is the fast say the fast. the fast you know what a fast is right mm -hmm. generally if we're talking about food what do you have to do stop eating the food yeah. it's pretty simple right mm -hmm. stop speaking thine own words he calls it a fast that he's chosen stop speaking thine own words well if we stop speaking our own words what words are we gonna speak his words again the fear of the Lord is not speaking say not, not. and then it is speaking his words are you getting this that's the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord who 
the Holy Ghost who's in you who you walk with in the earth if you want to walk in the fear of the Lord you're gonna say not and you're gonna say are you getting this Malachi chapter 3 and verse 13 your words have been stout against me saith the Lord and yet you say what have we spoken so much against thee verse 14 you have said it is vain to serve God and what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance for God said this is speaking against him mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. verse 16 then they that feared the Lord spake say they, they. that feared the Lord, the Lord. Spake. spake is this in your Bible I mean I've been trying to walk you up to it real slow mm -hmm. they that feared the Lord spake often were they they obviously were not the ones that's words were stout against right mm -hmm. they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it talking about the fear of the Lord Lord who Lord the Holy Ghost that you walk around with are you supposed to Matthew chapter 12 and then verse 32 and whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him neither in this world nor in the world to come people don't like that verse there's a lot more in there than just you know the 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 initial scare that a lot of people like to preach on make people scared when you look at it whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaks against say speaks against, speaks against. I mean against meaning contrary to mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're talking about we're talking about walking in the fear of the Lord the Holy Ghost if you're speaking contrary to him you're not fearing the Lord so if if I'm not speaking contrary what am I speaking in agreement mm -hmm. I'm speaking in agreement with the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. say I'm speaking, I'm speaking. In, agreement in agreement with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. and I, I refuse to say anything other than that mm -hmm. because I fear the Lord are you getting this your words become the fear of the Lord and he hears them listen your words become the fear of the Lord and he hears them the fear of the Lord is equivalent to worshiping him as you use the right words you begin worshiping him in a way that other people can't so when I use the words I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost only you're the only God in the earth today I worship you Holy Ghost only and then I refuse to say stupid things beware what you say after you start worshiping the Holy Ghost I hope you're listening to me what should you say after you start worshiping the Holy Ghost chapter and verse is the best thing right because if you refuse to say opposite of what chapter and verse says and you refuse and you do say what chapter and verse says mm -hmm. then you're continuing on in your worship of him and the fear of the Lord and then multiplication shall come your way mm -hmm. is this any good so I can say I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost I worship you Holy Ghost my God Holy Ghost supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus I worship you Holy Ghost does that make him happy yes. will I be multiplied by doing that yes. Psalm 145 verse 19 he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him he will personally will fulfill not an anointing he personally listen if you worship him and you say his word and you refuse to say the other stuff he will personally with his glory fulfill 
the desire of them that fear him he does it his glory does it his goodness does it his personal glory now remember we behold his glory and are changed into the same image in that same place worshiping him and fearing the Lord worshiping him and fearing the Lord worshiping him and fearing the Lord say worshiping him worshiping and him. fearing the Lord do you understand what those things are now Psalms 34 verse 9 oh fear the Lord do you understand more about what it is now if we just took the fear part and said well change it to worship because they're often interchangeable worship the Lord I preach on it all the time worship the Lord but now we know what the fear of the Lord is oh fear the Lord you his Saints for there is no want to them that fear him not too long ago he said if you will worship me I will give you anything you want I just read you two verses of Scripture that say the exact same thing if you worship him he'll give you anything you want second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 7 but if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance was that Moses's glory he was so good-looking no that was God's glory they couldn't even look at him because God's glory for the glory of his countenance which glory was to be done away verse 8 how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious for if the ministration of condemnation be glory much more doth the ministration of righteousness say righteousness, righteousness. exceed in glory seeing that we have such hope we use we use say use, use. great plainness of speech and not as Moses was put a veil over his face the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which was abolished verse 16 nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord say the Lord, the Lord the veil shall be taken away now the Lord is veil taken away that spirit where are we now with unveiled face looking at the glory of the Lord that spirit Holy Ghost now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord what are we beholding the glory the, glory, the anointing no. no the glory is personal presence his personal person person say his personal person person that's what we're beholding and his glory are changed into the same image from glory we're not changed by the anointing we're changed by his glory affecting us to another level of glory I tried to get tried to get you here this is where we have to go this is where the angels have been for 700 years and longer they go from glory to glory to glory are you here yes. from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord another translation says even as by the Lord who is the Spirit who are we changed by beholding the Lord who is the Spirit who's the Lord who is the Spirit the Holy Ghost Acts chapter 9 verse 31 then had the churches rest throughout all Judea Galilee Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied if you want to be multiplied we've listed out the things you must do and as you begin to worship him as God and use the words I worship you Holy Ghost and then refuse 
because of the fear of the Lord to say things contrary to him he will begin to rise up in you and multiply you your things your life to the point where you wouldn't even recognize it if you saw it because the great things are beginning to take place in the people of God in this day in this time and we shall not be beaten down but we shall rise up from glory to glory until the world will recognize and see and know that we worship the true and living God and many 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 shall come along with us we thank you for it Holy Ghost we thank you that you are taking us from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord if you'll stay tuned with us I will take you there I'm called to take you there if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost I worship God. you I thank you that you are blessing me and multiplying me that includes my finances I thank you that I am blessed and great things are moving in my direction for me right now in Jesus name amen Jesus at his right hand Holy Ghost your God in the earth 